Oh hi there! My most requested video by a huge margin is Lost Music. So today, I'm going to give the people what they want and talk about just a handful of the many pieces of Lost Music. There is so much music that can't be found, I can't even begin to talk about them all in one video. So if I left out something you want to hear about, let me know in the comments or find me on Twitter at Lost Media Mike, and I just might make a part two. So here are 10 pieces of Lost Music. N.W.A. were a hip-hop group best known for popularizing gangster rap with their iconic 1988 album Straight Outta Compton. In the early 90s, the group would break up and feud for years, with members releasing diss tracks such as Ice Cube's No Vaseline, where he directly disses N.W.A. member Eazy-E. Eazy would go on to diss Dr. Dre in the 1993 It's On Dr. Dre, but he would never release a response to Ice Cube's No Vaseline before his tragic passing of AIDS in 1995. This has led to the long-standing rumor that Eazy-E recorded an entire diss EP with the track Heat Melts Cube, brutally dissing Ice Cube. But the two made up, so Eazy decided not to release the track. The rumored diss is so good that Ice Cube reportedly listened to the track and left the studio in tears. It's believed that rapper DJ Yella has a copy of the diss track. In 2011, the song was supposedly leaked online called When the Ice Crumbles. But in 2014, DJ Yella confirmed the leak was fake but did not admit to having the lost diss track. Today, the existence of the song is still unconfirmed. Before Imagine Dragons became the worldwide success they are today, they released a few EPs worth of music before being signed to a major label. Of their pre-fame releases, all the music has been well-preserved by their dedicated fan base, and some of their earliest songs even made their way onto their 2012 debut album, Night Visions. However, there is one song confirmed to have been recorded that has yet to be released, Imagine Dragons' lost song, I Wish You Well. In 2010, on the band's official YouTube channel, they released a short video of their time in the studio. Included, among other songs, was a 40 second clip of the lost song, I Wish You Well. The song is in a pretty unique position where the song can be found in its entirety on YouTube. In 2010, the band played the song live and an audience recording of the performance can be found. But this found quality is so poor that I don't even know if you can consider the song found. It's like if we found a lost movie, but the film was so deteriorated the movie became incomprehensible. The studio version of I Wish You Well has still yet to surface. In 2005, American Swamp Rock group Smash Mouth announced their fifth studio album, Old Habits, for a summer release. Due to lead singer Steve Harwell's involvement in VH1's Surreal Life and the release of the band's greatest hits album, Old Habits was delayed and ultimately cancelled in 2006, being replaced with the album Summer Girl. This new album would include a few songs from Old Habits, and a few more songs found their way to other albums, with two being released on the band's SoundCloud. The album's status as lost became complicated in 2020 when it was discovered that the band's publisher, Spirit Music Group, released 90 second clips of each song to their catalog of licensable songs. This is an interesting circumstance because we're likely only missing the second verse and ending of each song. Shout out to Reddit user It's Gallus for researching and compiling this partially lost album and its subsequent discoveries. In early 1970, guitar legend Jimi Hendrix began work on his most ambitious project to date, a 16-track suite called Black Gold. Hendrix began preliminary work at his Greenwich Village apartment recording demos on acoustic guitar for the potential album, with the ultimate goal for the songs to be turned into an animated movie. Hendrix would tragically pass later that year at age 27, never seeing his final project fully realized. Prior to his passing, Hendrix recorded a few of the Black Gold songs with the Jimi Hendrix Experience and his side project Band of Gypsies, but the solo acoustic versions of Black Gold have never been released. Hendrix's estate believed the recordings were stolen following his passing, but it was discovered in 1992 that Hendrix had entrusted the sole copy of the album to drummer Mitch Mitchell, who didn't realize he had the only copy. In 2010, Janie Hendrix, Jimmy's sister, said the album would be released within the decade, but nothing has yet to come of this. As of October 2020, the only track from the Black Gold cassette tape to have been released is the track Suddenly November Morning. The rest of the solo acoustic recordings are still missing. In 
2007's live-action animation hybrid, Enchanted, contained music written by legendary composers Alan Minkin and Stephen Schwartz. The score was so successful that three out of the movie's five songs were nominated for Best Original Song at the 2007 Academy Awards. However, the movie's title track, Enchanted, never made it into the final film. The song was meant to be sung by James Marston and Indina Menzel's characters in the movie. Minkin claimed that during production of the film, the song just didn't fit into the story. He also mentioned the song was meant to be played over a montage, leading to speculation that Enchanted might have been replaced by the song Ever After. Minkin expected the song to be featured on the DVD release, but to this day, the song has never been heard by the public. To make the song's exclusion even more confusing, Menzel is known for her ability as a singer, but because Enchanted was cut, she never sings in the movie. In 2008, alternative metal band Deftones began work on their sixth studio album, Eros. But on November 3rd, 2008, Deftones bassist Chi Chang was involved in a serious car accident and left him in a semi-comatose state, halting all progress on the album with the band focusing their attention on Chang. While in recovery, the band hired a new bassist to replace Chang until he was able to rejoin the band and scrapped Eros until they could finish it with Chang. Their official reason for not finishing the album was that it was too dark and they wanted to move to a more uplifting sound to cope with Chang's recovery. Over the next five years, Chang slowly began to recover from the accident, finally being released from the hospital in 2012, four years after the crash. Sadly, on April 13th, 2013, Chi Chang passed away due to cardiac arrest. Since his loss, the band has expressed interest in releasing the album, but they want to wait for a time where the album can be viewed on its own merit. Since its cancellation, only two songs from the lost album have emerged, Melanie, which has been performed live since 2008, and the song Smile, which was released on the lead singer's YouTube channel, marking the first time a recording from the lost sessions have been released. Even though the album was never finished, it's unknown how many songs were recorded and what was actually completed. In 1982, Bruce Springsteen began work on his sixth studio album. Springsteen recorded rough demos of the album at home on a four-track cassette recorder. When he took the songs into the studio later that year, he and the E Street Band fleshed out the acoustic recordings into rock songs. When he was finished recording, the boss realized that his original demos were perfect as they were and didn't need a full band. He scrapped what would be known as the Electric Nebraska Sessions, and the solo home recordings were mixed and mastered into the critically acclaimed album Nebraska you can hear today. But not everything from the Electric Nebraska sessions are lost. The session include a number of success stories that would make their way onto the boss's next album, Born in the USA. Of the Electric Nebraska songs recorded in April 1982, there are still nine songs that are lost. Actor, video game mogul, professional rapper, and occasional basketball player Shaquille O'Neal had released four fairly successful rap albums in the 90s, with each album charting on the Billboard Top 100. But in 2001, Shaq failed to release his fifth studio album, Shaquille O'Neal Presents His Super Friends, Volume 1. The album was highly ambitious, with Shaq calling the album revolutionary and an attempt to bring together all the genres. As the title suggests, the album was to include a number of collaborators, including Dr. Dre, Ludacris, Snoop Dogg, George Clinton, 311 drummer Chad Sexton, and corn bassist Fieldy, among many others. The album was originally meant for a September 2001 release before being moved to October, before being scrapped for unknown reasons. Prior to its cancellation, a music video for the track Connected was released, along with four other singles, In the Sun, Do It Faster, Y'all Don't Really Want It, and Make It Hot. The album was completely finished, even being reviewed by All Music, who gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. In 2017, a promo copy of the album was sold for $999 and has yet to leak online, but a 6 minute video was uploaded to YouTube containing small samples of each song, leaving 10 songs from the album mostly lost, and 4 songs cut from the album completely lost. Tapeworm were a supergroup formed in 1995 as a side project between Nine Inch Nails frontman Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails live members Danny Lorner and Charlie Closer. The band soon expanded to include Tool frontman Maynard James Keenan, composer Atticus Ross, Pantera singer Phil Anselmo, and producer Alan Moeller among others. 
By 2001, the group had an album's worth of music, but by 2003, the release of any material was stuck in legal issues between Reznor and Keenan's record labels. Despite the legal troubles, both MTV and Kerrang! reported that the album was nearly complete. But in 2004, Reznor announced that Tape Room had broken up, and they had no plans to release any material. Reznor explained the lack of release by saying, The bottom line is, if the music had been great, all of this probably could have worked out. None of the group's music has since been released, but against the wishes of other band members, Maynard James Keenan would record the Tapeworm songs Vacant, renamed to Passive, and Potions with his bands A Perfect Circle and Puss of Fire respectively. Not even the names of the other unreleased songs are known. The Beach Boys' unfinished album, Smile, has one of the most complicated and convoluted stories in music history, with the album becoming legendary for its collapse. The album was meant to follow up the band's 1966 release, Pet Sounds. Beach Boys frontman Brian Wilson produced and composed most of the album, intending it to be the group's most ambitious work to date, involving jazz, ragtime, poetry, found objects, musique concrète, comedy sketches, and complex orchestration. The album would fall apart due to creative infighting, Brian Wilson's deteriorating mental state, the project's overambition, and even the release of the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is rumored to have contributed to the album's downfall. In 1967, the band released Smiley Smile, a simplified version of Smile, and decades later Brian Wilson attempted to recreate the album, leading to the 2004 release, Brian Wilson Presents Smile. In 2011, the full band released a compilation work, the Smile Sessions, which gave the most accurate realization of Brian Wilson's vision, though Wilson still says he prefers his 2004 version. Despite the album being meticulously archived, studied, and remade, there are still numerous aspects to the initial recording session in 1967 that have yet to be released or have gone missing. These lost recordings include a cover of On Top of Old Smokey with Paul McCartney, the original vocal tracks for the songs Look, I Wanna Be Around, and On a Holiday, a recording of Paul McCartney eating a carrot, the songs Crack a Whip and When I Get Mad I Just Play the Drums, the original mix of Heroes and Villains, and most mysteriously of all are the lost multi-tracks for Wonderful, Cabin Essence, and My Only Sunshine, along with the final multi-track for Good Vibrations, all of which were accidentally left behind at the studio, never to be seen again. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments why Shaq is your favorite rapper, and let me know what other topics you want me to cover in future videos. Remember, once we reach 10,000 subscribers, I'll be releasing my wife Molly's folk cover of All Star by Smash Mouth. We're almost there, just a little bit further. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon.